Okay, today I'm going to show you KitKat running on the Samsung Galaxy Player 5.0. As you can see, I have mine here. It is the USA model, as you can tell, by the home button. Um, so yeah, let me go ahead and turn it on. So, as you can see, it is running KitKat version 4.4.2. Get the little Easter egg here. Runs very smoothly on this device. So, I'm going to show you how to get that right now. So, before you follow this guide, you'll need to follow my other guide about how to get um, CyanogenMod 10.2 on the device. And in that guide, I go over the steps of installing Clockwork Mod Recovery to the device, which you will need to flash the ROM. Just follow this guide after watching the other guide until you get to the part where you need to put the zip files, which are the ROMs, on your device. So, once you've gotten to that part, go ahead and start following this guide which I'm about to make right now. So the first thing you're going to need to do is obviously download the ROM off the XDA developer page, which as you can see I have opened right here and will have a link to in the description. So on this page, until it's updated, you will need to go to the last page of the thread, so click this little double arrow here. For some reason it opens lots of ads, I don't understand that. But, um, so what you need to do is, you'll see right here, this post was on the 12th of January, 2014. And stupid ads are opening for some reason. Um, you'll see a ROM and a US kernel, as well as some G apps, which we'll also need. So the first thing we're going to do is download the ROM. As you can see, it is downloading. Next, I'll go ahead and download the US kernel, since I have a US device, obviously. That is now downloading. Um, and lastly, we need the G apps. So to get the G apps, go ahead and click this link here. And you'll be brought to another thread. Go ahead and scroll down until you see Mini Modular Package right here. So what you're going to do is click on Mediafire. I usually use Mediafire. You can use either of these things. Actually, for the purpose of this, I'll just use Android File Host. And right here, you are going to use the version designed for Android version 4.4.2. So download that as well. Just wait till it downloads. And as you can see, it has started downloading. Albeit very slowly, so you might want to use a different mirror since, as you can see, it is only downloading at 17 or around 20 kilobits per second, which is horrible. So I'm going to use the Mediafire mirror for the next time. I'll show you that actually right now. Mediafire, as you can see, once again, you get a list of devices. Get the .zip, not the .md5. You don't need the .md5 files. So just go ahead and get that. And we now have a decently speed download. So I'll resume the video once it is downloaded. Okay, so the files are now downloaded. As you can see, I have all three of them right there. So what you're going to need to do now is plug your device into your computer. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Then enable USB storage if it doesn't do it by itself. Alright, go ahead and open it. And to make it easier, I made a folder called um, KitKat right here. As you can see, you can do the same. But it doesn't matter. If you don't have a lot of stuff on your SD card, then you can simply put the zips um, in the root of the card. As you can see, I have some down here from previous flashing. But um, um, for my case, I made a KitKat folder right here. 
as you can see I already have all three files copied in so once you do that you can go ahead and close that turn off USB storage to make sure everything's copied unplug the device and go ahead and reboot into Clockwork Mod Recovery so I'm going to do that right now Alright, so we're finally in. Now, what you're going to need to do first is go down to white cache slash factory reset and click yes, but I'm not going to do that now because I do not want to reflash since I'm already running KitKat. So, you do that, then go down to mounts and storage and select format system. And once again, I'm not going to do that because I do not want to ruin my current flash. And lastly, click Advanced and click Wipe Dalvik Cache. Ignore any errors you may get. Now, click Install Zip. Choose Zip from External SD Card or Storage slash SD Card 0, depending on whether you're using an external micro SD card or internal storage like I am. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. I'm going to scroll down here to my KitKat folder. By the way, if, well you should probably know this, but the volume buttons navigate up and down and the power button selects, so you should know that from my previous video. Let's go ahead and select your KitKat folder and first off, select the ROM and click yes on that. Um, then select the US kernel and then at and, by the way, when you flash this, you may get an error. If so, just reflash again and it should work perfectly fine. Then flash the US kernel if you have a capacitive home button like I do. And then lastly, flash the gapps package and it should all work perfectly. So then, once you're all done flashing, go ahead and go back and reboot system now. And it will take quite some time to boot the first time. Actually, this is probably the longest first boot I've ever experienced of any ROM I've flashed. So please be patient. And I'm going to resume the video once mine has booted. Okay, so as you can see, my device is now booted back up. And we are now running KitKat. So yeah, it runs very nicely. Um, very fluid. What you're going to want to do, like I told you in the previous video of installing CyanogenMod 10.2, you're going to want to go, go to About Phone and scroll down to Build Number and tap it. And you'll tap it a certain amount of times and it will enable development settings. So once you've enabled development settings, click on Developer Options and check Advanced Reboot so you can easily boot into recovery whenever you need to. And you also get a performance tab, so you can click that and you can actually overclock your processor, which I've done. So I found the most optimal performance is gotten by selecting 1200 MHz on the maximum clock frequency and for CPU governor select on demand. And I've found that this gives me the best performance of the device. And one thing that you're probably all glad that will work is the camera partially works the rear facing camera um, does partially work so let me go ahead and give you a demo of that now as you can see the camera is working and seeing my computer right there so I'll just go ahead and snap a picture and as you can see it does it is partially working it's not fully working but it is um, frozen on this screen, but if you go back, go into your gallery, you will see, well this worked before, I don't know why it's not now, but sometimes the uh, picture will actually take. And if you turn the flash on, 
um, the flash will also work. So. As you can see, and that works, um, which also means the Torch app works as well. So, I'll show you that. As you can see, the Torch app is working perfectly. Turn on the strobe effect. As you can see, that works. And like I said, the camera only works some of the time. But it is still an improvement over Cyanogen Mod 10 too. So you can't deny progress. Um, so yeah, that is how to get Cyanogen Mod 11, or KitKat version 4.4.2, on a Samsung Galaxy Player 5.0. Hope you enjoyed this video.